Hello, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to some thermochemistry, which is the chemistry of energy and heat. Specifically, I'm going to teach you about the difference between an endothermic and an exothermic reaction. This is the goal for today. By the end of today, I want you to be able to say, I can determine whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic based on the enthalpy change or the energy diagram. Um, this is the goal, but there's some words that I think are maybe confusing and that I should explain. So I'm going to tell you what endothermic and exothermic are. I'm going to tell you what enthalpy is and what an energy diagram is. We'll start with this one, enthalpy. Enthalpy is technically defined as a system's internal energy plus the product of its pressure and volume, but I want you to just focus on this. Enthalpy is how much energy is inside something, a system. For example, a rock and a bomb. Which one of these two things do you think has more energy inside of it? Well, the bomb, that could blow up a whole city, right? That has a lot of fire and heat and motion inside of it, I guess, potentially ready to explode out. But the rock can't do very much. So we would say that the bomb has higher enthalpy because it has more energy inside of it, and the rock has lower enthalpy. What about this? Ice cubes or boiling water? Which one of these two do you think has more energy inside of it? Well, the boiling water has a lot of energy inside of it. That boiling water is actually like steam. You could use it to power a turbine maybe. Or if you put your hand in it, it'll get really hot and it'll burn it. So the water actually has more energy and therefore more enthalpy than the ice cubes do. Finally, a bomb or a blazing fire. This one is a little bit tricky because the bomb is not warm. You can touch a bomb and it won't burn your hand. But the fire, you can stick your hand in the fire and it'll burn. You can't just focus on how hot it is though. You have to think about if all of the energy inside of it was released, which one would have more? And the bomb, that could blow up a whole city. These logs, they can maybe burn down themselves. They can warm you up a little bit, but it's not as much. So because the bomb has more theoretical energy, if it all exploded out, you'd say the bomb has higher enthalpy. So enthalpy is basically the total amount of energy inside something, if it was all used up. Chemists use the symbol H to represent enthalpy. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. You might see a capital H, and I'll use the word enthalpy, um, and that's because H is the symbol for enthalpy. For example, let's say you have some logs, and you set them on fire, and they turn into ashes. What happens here is you have the logs at the beginning that have a high enthalpy, they have a high H, which means that they have a lot of energy stored inside of them in the chemicals, but when it burns, that energy is going down. It, the logs are losing the energy and releasing it as heat. So the enthalpy of the logs is decreasing. Then at the end, you have ashes. It's used up most of its energy, and the ashes have low enthalpy, which is why you can't set ashes on fire and get more fire. They used up all the energy. So the chemicals in the ash have lower enthalpy than the chemicals in the logs. Okay, so this was the learning goal. I can determine whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic based on the enthalpy change or energy diagram. Hopefully you know what enthalpy is now, so I can teach you about endo and exothermic. So this comes next. Now, if a process causes enthalpy to increase, the process is called endothermic. And if a process causes enthalpy to decrease, it's called exothermic. Endothermic means that energy is entering or being gained. So endothermic means the energy is going into your chemicals. And exothermic means that energy is exiting the chemicals, leaving the chemicals and going into something else, like maybe turning into heat and going into you. For example, a bomb has very high enthalpy, but then it'll explode, and then when it's empty, all the fuel is used up, it has low enthalpy, and that's why it can't explode again. So is this bomb exploding? Is this an endothermic or an exothermic reaction? Is the energy leaving the bomb or entering the bomb? Well, in this case, the energy is clearly leaving the bomb, right? It's in the fuel, but then it explodes out into heat and fire and destruction. So bombs exploding are exothermic reactions because the bomb lost all the energy. It exited the bomb, and it turned into destruction and fire. Now, enthalpy is measured in a unit called joules, and the symbol for enthalpy is H. We have a new thing, which is the symbol for the change in enthalpy, which is a little triangle H. In science and math, a little triangle in front of a quantity means the change of that quantity. Uh, the triangle is called a delta, and it's a Greek letter. So as an example, let's say that this dollar sign represents money. If somebody gave you $5, we would represent this in science as your delta money, your change in money, was positive $5, because you got $5. Now, if you lost $5, we would represent it as 
delta money, your change in money, was negative $5. So you lost $5. If your delta money is a positive number, then you get money. But if your delta money is a negative number, then you lost it. So, bringing it back, in an endothermic reaction, we are gaining energy, and in an exothermic reaction, we're losing energy. Therefore, in an endothermic reaction, we have a positive change of enthalpy. That's what that triangle H means. And in an exothermic reaction, we have a negative change of enthalpy. The chemicals are losing their energy and giving it out. So it has a negative change. See if you get it. Which one of these is endothermic and which one is exothermic? So which one of these is endothermic and which one is exothermic? We have melting one pound of ice and burning one pound of wood. When you melt one pound of ice, the change of enthalpy in that ice, when it goes from ice to water, is positive 334,000 joules. And when you burn the wood, the change of enthalpy for that reaction is negative 8 million joules, about. So you have one positive and one negative change of enthalpy. Which one's endothermic and which one's exothermic? Okay, so melting ice, that has a positive delta H. That means it has a positive change of enthalpy. So the chemicals are gaining that much energy. So that means it's endothermic. The energy is going into the chemicals. Now burning wood, the delta H, the change of enthalpy, is negative. And that means that you have about 8 million joules of energy leaving the chemicals in the wood. That's what the negative means. So burning wood is exothermic. Okay, so this was the learning goal. You know what endothermic and exothermic are. You know how to figure it out based on the enthalpy change. A positive enthalpy change is endothermic, and a negative enthalpy change is exothermic. But now I have to teach you about energy diagrams. Basically, it's a graph. On the y-axis, we have the energy that a chemical has inside of it. At the low end, you have low energy, and at the high end, you have high energy. And then on the x-axis, we have the reaction progress. And basically what that means is that when you start the reaction, you're on the left, and when you end the reaction, you're on the right. So you can think of it as the time, but it's not exactly the same. So we have the energy axis and the reaction progress. Now, exothermic reactions have a negative change of enthalpy. So that means that it has a lower energy at the end than it did at the beginning. That means that in an exothermic reaction, the chemicals will have less energy at the end than at the start. So you're going to have a downward sloping line. If you see an energy diagram with a downward sloping line, it's exothermic because the chemical is losing energy as the process goes. Now endothermic reactions have a positive delta H. They have a positive change of enthalpy. And that means that the substances has more energy at the end than at the beginning, because it's gaining the energy. So that means that in an endothermic reaction, you're going to have more energy at the end than at the start. So you're going to have an upward sloping line, like this. The re-energy is going to increase as time goes on. Now the lines might not be exactly straight. They might be a little bit bendy or a little bit wavy. So they're not going straight up or straight down. To figure out if these lines represent endo or exothermic reactions, you just look to see if they end up higher or lower than where they started. So you look only at the end and at the beginning for these processes. That's it, just the beginning and the end. This is an endothermic reaction, for example, because it ends up with more energy than it started with. So if you connect the beginning and the end, the line goes up. So it gains energy as the process moves. This is an exothermic reaction, because if you connect the very end to the very beginning, you get a downward sloping line, so it loses energy in total as the process goes on. So, you should have learned how to determine whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic based on the enthalpy change of the energy diagram. Um, if you have a positive enthalpy change, like positive 334,000 joules, or a line that ends up higher than it started on an energy diagram, then it's endothermic. And if you have a negative enthalpy change, or a line that ends up lower than it started on the energy diagram, that means it's exothermic. So if you've got those last two slides and you understand everything on them, then you've got the point of this video. I hope it was helpful.